At Wealth ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything exchange-traded funds. I'm your host, Bob Pisani. We're talking about gold today, and that's what's the important thing about what's going on here. We're going to talk about today about what's working and not working in investing with Larry Swedro, the director of research at Buckingham Strategic Partners and author of the new book, Enrich Your Future, The Keys to Successful Investing. But first, I want to talk about gold and what's going on there. Gold is one of the star performers this year, up 13% to an historic high, outperforming stocks and bonds. What's driving gold? Let's talk to one of the world's gold experts. This is George Milling Stanley, Chief Gold Strategist, State Street Global Advisors. George oversees and helped launch the Spider Gold Shares, that's the GLD, the world's largest gold ETF, 20 years ago when he was at the World Gold Council, and I covered that when I remember it well. Also joining us, my old friend Todd Rosenbluth, Head of Research at Vetify. Uh, George, good to see you. Why is gold hitting a new high? Good to see you too, Bob. I think it's a whole bunch of reasons. Never just one thing with gold, but we've got good, strong jewelry demand in the emerging markets. You've mentioned India and China, but all across the emerging markets, that's a very good demand there. We've got um, very strong demand from emerging markets, central banks, and we've also got renewed investor demand. And I think that that's building some momentum for gold, which is always a good thing to do. Yeah, the, the, it, it's quite amazing. So you and I have always emphasized this, and I know you're, you're a supply side demand guy, supply side guy. Supply is fairly steady. Yeah. The amount of mining that's actually done in gold is fairly steady. It's the demand side that matters. So we're seeing increased demand from China and mm -hmm. India, the two biggest suppliers out there. The Chinese, Average investors seem very dissatisfied with the stock market there and with the real estate market there. Is that benefiting gold? I think no question. I mean, gold is a very good alternative to both of those for, for Chinese investors. The other thing, um, China had been running into some economic problems that started in real estate and then, then spread into the financial sector. Um, I think that, that you know there's now some stimulus activity going on in China, and that helps. Yeah, uh, and then we have central banks. Yep. Now, this is a very intriguing story. They're increasing their supply of, uh, of gold out there. Explain why that's happening. Yeah, look, for, for central banks in primarily the emerging markets realized over the last 15 years that they are very heavily overweight in their official reserves in, in U.S. dollar denominated debt instruments and underweight in gold. They have more than two thirds of their reserves in treasuries and less than 5% of their reserves in gold. That's a dangerous imbalance as far as they're concerned uh, and they're doing something about it. They have been for 14 straight years now. Um, this year has already started well with China in particular, uh, a big buyer already. Um, and I think that we're probably gonna be another good year for central bank demand. And that has been very, very good support whenever gold's shown any softness, yeah. and I think it's going to help to push prices higher. And gold has a certain advantage. If you have it in a vault in your country, you can't confiscate it. I mean, this whole thing about what happened with seizing Russian assets can't be lost on some other countries in the world. Exactly. I think, you know, uh, it really increases the attractiveness of the one official reserve asset that is, uh, that is universally acceptable um, and, and entirely transparent. You know, uh, Todd, we always talked about gold as a hedge against inflation. George and I have been talking about this for, for 20 years. But the academic letter, literature seems very l mixed on this, frankly. Some people think it is a hedge against inflation. Other people think it, it historically doesn't appear to act that way. And, and is there any thoughts on what people are saying now about gold? Well, people are using gold ETFs to diversify away from stocks and bonds. And so we've seen a rally in gold We've seen bid up demand for gold ETFs like GLD and GLDM in just the past month. But that's only limited the net outflows that we saw the first three or first couple of months of the year. People have looked to other ETFs as either a hedge or to diversify their portfolio. Like now that we have spot Bitcoin ETFs, those have seen tremendous demand out of the gate even at the same time that gold is started the rally. Yeah, as a diversification strategy, it certainly makes sense. And people ask me, is gold money? It's sort of a, you know, a, a, I guess a, a scholarly question. I mean, it has functioned as money, mm -hmm. George, throughout history. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It, you can't go to the store and, and buy groceries with gold, so in that sense it's not exchangeable, but it is a store of value. It, it does has a perceived, a perceived function as money, and there are some countries where you can still actually use gold to buy things, whether it's large purchases like, like real estate, houses, or whether it's white goods. For example, in Vietnam, you buy those with gold kilobars. Yeah, so the important thing here is it, it has a history of acting as money. It is a store of value, even if we can say it's not, it doesn't have all the attributes of money, 
right now, and it is certainly a diversifier out there. And it's the ETF revolution has made it easy to store gold in vaults that's safe. Uh, so I guess it makes some sense to me that if you have some concerns about diversification, or you, people are better educated about diversification, gold will be doing a little bit better, on top of the demand you're talking about. Yeah, and I would actually have thought we'd see even more demand for gold ETFs. In fact, in 2023, gold did relatively well uh, and it went up in value and investors moved away from it. We saw net outflows for the gold ETFs in general. So it's encouraging to see new demand and it's also you can get gold exposure through gold mining companies uh, and even more diversified metals and mining ETFs like XME, for example, right. has gold well, exposure. That, that's a good point. So gold rally, but so has other things. Commodities have rallied. Oil has rallied. Um, metals have rallied. Mining stocks, that's XME, uh, the mining ETF uh, in general, has done very well. The metals ETF, I should say. Right. And that, you're going to get exposure to gold. You're also going to get exposure to some of the other metals. Steel is, I think, the largest industry exposure to that diversified metals and mining ETF, XME. Yeah. Now, we, we've talked about this many times, gold stocks versus gold. Mm -hmm. Gold, they don't always act the same, although they sort of move in tandem. And what the, the reason they don't always move in tandem is why? Because gold stocks are part of the, gold, the stock market and they sometimes act. Correct. Is that so the there's, answer? There's, there's earnings potential for the company. So obviously supply and demand plays a role in driving the overall price. Uh, for, for gold mining companies, but then these are companies that have actual costs to, to be able to go in. Uh, G, uh, GDX and GDXJ from Van Eck are some of the leading gold mining ETFs. Yeah, and you, I mean, that's, you agree with this point though, but they don't well, always, they sort of move together, but not exactly. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the gold price is one of the inputs that uh, determine the share price performance of gold mining companies. The reason, one of the reasons I own gold, Bob, is that I believe it offers me some protection against potential weakness in the equity market. Uh, and as you said, when, when the equity market goes down, gold mining stocks remember that they're equities and they tend to go down with the general level of the equity market. So they're not offering me that extra level of protection. Now, I want to bring up the fact that you actually run two different gold ETFs, GLD and GLDM, the, the junior gold, I guess you want to call it, but it's the same thing, essentially, right? I, I mean, what, this, yep. just a different price structure, and it's, so viewers get ex confused about that. Can you explain? There it is, GLDM and GLD. These are essentially the same products, right? They're very, very similar. Um, the difference is how do you actually want your gold? Um, if you are someone who wants to trade, if you want to rebalance a portfolio, so you need to be trading in and out of gold, or if you want to be a tactical player, that means you need to be able to move very, very quickly, then uh, GLD's liquidity after 20 years now means that, uh, that, that that has very, very low trading costs compared to any other gold ETF. If you have a million dollars and you want to put a million dollars into gold and leave it out there, then GLDM with its lower expense ratio makes more sense for you. But if you're trading, then then GLD makes sense. State Street does this with this with this S and P 500, right? They have they have a higher cost. The big SBY, the biggest mm -hmm. ETF out there in the world, they have a trillion dollar business, and then they have a, a lower cost. Right. Them. SPLG is the lower cost S and P 500 ETF. That's a trend that we've seen in the ETF industry to bring in more retail oriented new investors and compete a bit more on the expense ratio. So GLDM is probably the better way for new investors that are looking to hold it. Uh, or you, there's obviously some competition right. from Granite Shares and iShares and others. And speaking of, uh, of retail investors, is there any sign that young people in the United States, outside of China and India, I mean here in the United States, mm. young people are interested in gold or is it a fuddy-duddy investment? No, I don't think it's the fuddy-duddies. People, people of my age and older. I've always thought <laughs> our that, age. <laughs> I've always thought that our cohort understood gold better than anybody else. But State Street did a study recently which basically said that millennials, in terms of their appreciation for the value of gold in a portfolio, Millennials have overtaken Gen X, and they've overtaken my cohort, the baby boomers, as well. And what about the competition? He was mentioning Bitcoin ETFs out there. Is that competition? I mean, bonds are competition for stocks. Mm -hmm. Is Bitcoin ETFs competition for gold ETFs? I, I think Bitcoin may well be some competition for the people who want to take a tactical position in gold and just wait for the price to go up and sell. I think that Bitcoin may well offer competition there. But I don't think that Bitcoin really competes in terms of a long-term strategic allocation. And that's where I think gold really comes into its own. All right.
George, thank you very much. Really enjoyed. Always a pleasure chatting with you. 20 years I've been talking with George Milling Stanley. Uh, the 20th anniversary of GLD is coming up. Coming up in November. We'll be ringing we'll the bell. We'll have you back for that. We'll definitely have you back for that. <laughs> thank George, you, thank you very much.